Hey everyone, it's Raheel. Welcome to Food Tuesday. There's nothing more third coast than getting fresh Louisiana crawfish and boiling them up with your friends, family, and neighbors at a crawfish boil. But how do you execute the perfect boil for beginners? Joining me today is one of the OGs of the Houston crawfish scene, Mike Trin of Mike Seafood, for a how-to guide on crawfish boils and how this little bayou creature got so popular in H-Town. It's Tuesday, June 6th. I'm Raheel Ramsnali, and here's what Houston's talking about. Mike, welcome into CityCast Houston, man. I'm so pumped to chat with you. How are you? I'm doing great, my brother. Hey, Mike, so before we start talking about the crawfish boil, I want to ask you a personal question, okay? Yeah. Do you suck the head off a of crawfish, yes or no? Man, <laughs> that's where the flavor is at, buddy. I mean, if, if you don't suck the head, you don't know what you're doing. You're, you're a rookie. I'm telling you, man, I love it. I think that's the best part. Look, the tail is good. It's nice and sweet, but oh, no all judge. that flavor, especially, yeah, especially your crawfish. Come on, man. Yeah. That's where it is. Yeah. Let's talk about this. Crawfish boils are such a big part of our community now, right? Yeah. I know it started in Louisiana. It's a Louisiana thing, but it's really become a Houston thing as well. We have an incredible crawfish scene here. But for those of us who've never done it at home, we're going to help them out and get this thing going. So first things first, what exactly do we need to do an at-home crawfish boil? Well, first of all, I mean, you have your equipment, everything ready. I've seen viral videos of somebody with a big pot. Boiling out a little small burner and it falls over and the whole entire pot, you know, all the crawfish and juice, everything to the side is inadequate, you know, equipment. That's the thing. You have to make sure the pot's the same size as the burner. You have an oversized pot and the small burner is not going to stand. And after that, like I said, you know, just everything just, it's just, uh, just get a, get some crawfish, go to standard procedure cleaning and having your seasoning. You have to have a, a mix of seasoning that you preferly like, the yeah. flavor you like, the profile you like. Yeah. Yep. So you got the propane burner. You yep. got your big pot that you need mm -hmm. to hold the crawfish. Yep. You got to go buy your crawfish from wherever you buy it, right? Yep. There's plenty of stores you can buy it from. Mm -hmm. Your seasoning, and you can buy any seasoning over the counter. But you know what? Here's the deal. You can blend your own seasoning. So you have your okay. basic boil and outside you can add whatever you want on, you know, extra garlic. You know, you have all kinds of seasoning, just whatever flavor profile you like, you dump it in, you mix it the flavor you want. What about with the vegetables? What vegetables do we need to get? Uh, celeries, uh, mushrooms. You got to have mushrooms. And okay. some people do cauliflower. What we'll happens cauliflower is soaks in the flavor. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. And then your base, uh, onions, garlic. The onion, garlic. You need the butter. You know, those those type of, those are regular. Almost everybody uses the same thing. Uh, some people put uh, orange peels. Some people with uh, lemon peels. Um, chop them up and throw it in there with a ball. It gives extra little kick. All right, perfect. So we've got all our supplies. And by the way, this is one that I think a lot of people forget. Don't forget like an ore or something to stir the pot with, right? Yeah, we got one at the, the shop. When you cook it, you have to you kind of mix it, the seeds and everything all with crawfish. Yeah. And uh, like, of course, you want me to go with the step. First step is going to be washing uh, the crawfish. Now, the, the myth is purging in salt. Uh, really, honestly, a lot of restaurants don't do that. We just wash okay. it. We wash it until it gets real clean. The myth about the salt purging, it's, it's impossible. It's, it's useless, in other words. For a crawfish boil with your neighbors, you're going to have, let's say, 10 pounds of crawfish, right? Roughly. You're not going to cook them all at the same time. And you also got to separate the alive ones from the dead ones, right? Exactly. So here's the deal. Majority time that uh, we boil, you're going to have the minimum of a, a sack. A sack about like 37 pounds. You open the sack okay. up, you have to take all the dead crawfish out. You take all the trash out. Man, we find anywhere from grass to even little turtles inside of sacks of crawfish. You got to take them all oh, out. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you come from the bayou, the, in the water. That's what, that's what you're going to get. After that, you, you wash them. The way you can tell when it's clean is keep on washing them until the uh, water is basically clear. You know, that, that's the best way to, like, three, four, five, six times, whatever, as much as you can. Wash them, dump okay. the water out, fill up the water again, wash them again, dump the water out until the water's clear. That's when you know it's clean. All right. We've got the crawfish cleaned. We're going to set that aside for a second. Now yeah. we've got our propane burner going. We've got our big pot. Yeah. You can buy that anywhere, by the way. Yeah. Now what do we do? How do we get the actual water boil ready to go so we can throw our crawfish in there? Well, you know, you, you start adding your season, the flavor that you want, you know, um, start dropping in orange and, and, and lemon peels and stuff like that to get the actual okay. kick that you got in there. Once the water is boiling, then then uh, if you have like your sausage and corn, I like to boil that first. I don't like you know okay. after. I like to boil that separate first and take them out. It's a clean taster, you know. I, I usually boil those first. Then um, you know after 
that's done. You drop in the crawfish. That's the next step. All right. So the water's boiling. You got mm-hmm. your orange peel in there, onions, garlic, all yep. that good stuff. You're ready to go. Your seasoning. Yep. Water comes to a boil. Then you drop that crawfish in and it's ready to go. How long do you wait? This is a big one. Approximately like seven, six, seven minutes. Here's the deal. You can tell when it starts turning red and it starts floating. That's when you tell okay. it's done. The next step is, hey, once it's about seven minutes up, you, you kind of turn it off, you know, the boiler, yeah. the fire. You let it sit in there and soak. The most important thing mm. is soaking it. Uh, the crawfish, like I said, it, it, if it doesn't soak, you're not going to have the flavor inside the head that you want to suck on or the tail meat that yeah. when you peel, it won't have any flavor inside. The most important crucial step is the soaking part. Gotcha. I didn't know you had to let it soak for a while. I thought it was seven minutes and you take it out. You don't want to overcook it. No, you have to let it soak. Uh, I'm going to give you another trick too. Okay. It's a lot of people dump ice okay, in there to make it you know, soak faster. You just dump a little ice in there. Uh, some Cajun guy gave me a tip a long time ago, and we, we follow that, and it works. Uh, get a little really? ice, put a little season on top of the ice, shake it up, drop the ice in there, and you're going to watch the crawfish soak a lot faster. Wow. All right. Then you take it out. You got your strainer. You put mm-hmm. the crawfish out. Uh, it's ready to eat, right? Yep. Now, if they if you wanted to make an extra sauce on top like yours, uh, you do the Vietnamese style where you yeah, got the yeah. garlic butter, all that. Yeah. H- how do you do that? I don't want you to give away your recipe. I don't want to get in trouble here. But how how would you make that sauce? Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure you've seen it on TikTok and everybody else. You know, everybody has their own version. You got butter. You just start with butter yeah. and you put garlic, uh, minced garlic and onions, whatever you like to be in there to put in. Also, another seasoned blend that you want in there. And, um, you know, you start cooking it and that's your, that's your sauce. And uh, after that, like I soak mine, but some people want that sauce on top. After that, you pour the sauce on top of the crawfish and shake it up in a bowl. Yeah, love it. And then, it, then you're ready to go. Then you sit down, enjoy with friends, family, uh-huh. eat your crawfish. Hey, CityCast Houston, it's Michael Ziviak. While CityCast Houston works hard every day to connect you with the stories that matter most, I'm working in the background making sure that our listeners are connecting with the best that Houston has to offer. So what does that look like? It means meeting with the people who make Houston what it is, the business owners, the stakeholders, the decision makers, the Houstonians who put together those food festivals you enjoy, the concerts you attend, the exhibits you can't miss, and who make those candles your mom can't stop talking about. If this sounds like you, let me help you get your message out to the city's best audience with an ad right here on the CityCast Houston podcast and on our sister daily newsletter, Hey Houston. Shoot me an email at ads at citycast.fm And let's connect. This episode is brought to you by Certified Piedmontese Beef. Listen up, foodies. Make your next meal even better with real Nebraska beef. They have healthy, tender, delicious Italian heritage beef, grass-fed and sustainably raised on lush pastures in the Midwest. You can even create your own personally curated meat box that's shipped right to your door. To get two free steaks with any purchase over $50, use the code FREEBEEF at checkout. Learn more and shop exclusively at cpbeef.com. I want to go back to your first crawfish boil. Do you remember your first one? Like, how was it? It's so long ago. I mean, we just started like a group. I mean, it used to be a back then. It, it wasn't very popular. It was just me, my brother-in-law, my, my wife. We get together and I watch him boil. And I pretty got to a point where I was confident enough to start boiling my own self. Uh, like I said, it's trial and error, man. So in the beginning, when you first do it, you, you, there's a couple things you miss. Like, man, it's not soaked well. It doesn't have no flavor. So you start mm. playing around with it. You get better as time going. But, you know, like even my first boil, it wasn't bad because I've, I've watched and I participated in so many of them. That's awesome. Is that one of the reasons why you started the food truck back in 2003, Mike Seafood? Well, actually, you know, I graduated U of H, um, business major, and I wanted my own business for so long. And uh, honestly, seafood wasn't even my blood. It's not my trade. But I saw an opportunity, you know, and, and um, I, I started learning a trade. Uh, my in-laws were in the seafood business. So I figured, you know, where we're at when Highway 6 and, and Bissonette around the area, there was no competition back then. There was nothing back then. There were maybe mm. HB was barely open. Uh, there was a Kroger. Yeah. There wasn't barely any restaurants. So we came in the right time and there was the opportunity. There was a need for that. You know? Yeah. How was that the early years? Because as you mentioned, like crawfish boil, seafood restaurants were more popular when you head towards Galveston and yeah. uh, in that area. What were the first few years like with a community that doesn't understand this product yet? Well, okay, here's the deal. What what happened was like during that time, there wasn't many crawfish restaurants. You know, there's a lot of seafood restaurants, but it wasn't really catered toward crawfish. We were one of a few early ones that did it. 
Do you have some people that knew what it was that love it, and the rest were like, "Eh, we don't eat that. That's mud bugs." If you remember Katrina, after Katrina happened, we had a bunch of people from Louisiana, New Orleans, that came to Houston, that stayed in Houston, ended up living in Houston. These were the folks that I kind of more too much kind of helped the craze a little bit because they came here and there was no really crawfish around, or maybe a few restaurants in Houston that that had it. We're mm-hmm. one of the people that did it, and we did it out of trailer. They didn't care, you know. We had good crawfish, and they loved that, and it helped our our growth. That's a really good point because I grew up in Houston, right? I've yeah. been here since I was five years old. The first time I went to a crawfish boil was 2008, so yeah. three years after you know everyone moved here from Katrina, and that's when it really started picking up. After that, yeah, I mean, you just saw the craze take off. Yeah, when they start coming here, and everybody started looking for crawfish, and everybody like, damn, what is this? Is a trend? You know, something's <laughs> going on. And they try it first couple times, they weren't into it, but after a while, dude, it's kind of it's addicting. You know, the thing about the food, crawfish is addicting. It's, it's, a, it's a social food. You want to eat it, yeah. you want to boil around with a lot of people, and you know. So it came, became popular. You know, you now have two locations now. What was the hardest thing that you learned in running restaurants? Man, maintaining consistency. That's the hardest part. You know, you have to make sure one restaurant tastes the same as the other. You know, I, I mix my seed and I do everything my own self. So I, I make sure both locations have it. But you have to train your guys to, to, to cook a certain way. I mean, you can have the same seed in two different cooks and it will come out differently. And that's, yeah. that's the part we have to maintain. So we have one main manager, general manager. He, he oversees both kitchens. He oversees, make sure that the steps, the process, everything's the same. So also we have a trailer. That's going to be our third location. So Oh, nice. Where's the trailer going to be? It's in Fresno. We're actually already there in Fresno. It's open as right oh, now nice. as we're speaking. They're open right about like 1130, 12 o'clock. So. That's awesome, man. Congratulations. So for our listeners who don't want to try the crawfish boil at home, maybe this is just overwhelming. Yeah. I recommend they come to your restaurant, Mike's Seafood, one of the OGs, man. It's so good. Yeah. But what do you recommend to our listeners when they first step into your restaurant? What should they try? Um, You got to have something boiled there. If, if you don't want to do crawfish, try boiled shrimp, boiled snow crab. You can't go wrong. Next up up is our most popular is going to be the, the rice. Man, the house special rice, that thing is banging. So uh, come through and try our house special rice. Have andouille sausage, shrimp. It's like kind of fusion of Cajun to Asian, but uh, it, it's one of the most popular dish out there. Some people get mad at me when I recommend non-seafood at a seafood restaurant, <laughs> but your wings oh. are tremendous, man. Those are so good. I was about to tell you, hey, man, our wings are rising. Forget Timmy Chan. You got to go to Mike Seafood for wings are rising. We got some badass wings. Let's say, for example, you have a brother or, or something that doesn't eat seafood. You want to, you know, drag him along. They want something that's not seafood. Wing, burgers. So our wings are starting getting real popular where it becomes like almost as, sell as much as our seafood. Mike, man, I appreciate you joining us. Thank you for the tips for our at-home crawfish boil. And again, y'all got to go check out Mike's seafood. It is so good. Mike, thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. That was Mike Trim. You can check out the entire menu for Mike's seafood and their locations with the link in our show notes. Before we go, your late night Amazon purchases that you probably regret the next morning will actually be doing some good here locally because the Bezos Academy has officially opened their three tuition-free preschools in Houston. The Bezos Academy nonprofit, started by, yes, that Jeff Bezos, aims to close the childcare and education gap in underserved communities through Montessori-style preschool programs. You can learn more about the schools with the link in our show notes. That will do it for today. Thank you for listening, and I hope you learned something new. Hold on, I'm going to pause there one second. Let me clear my throat. Yeah. You're mute. You're mute. Oh, whoops. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me do it again.